gamers? I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And today on Dice and Dragons, we are going to be reviewing Star Trek Alliance. I've been eagerly awaiting this game. Now this is a cooperative version of Star Trek Attack Wing, published by WizKid Games and designed by Joss Dirksen. Now this you just is- just had to steal my line, didn't you? What line? Cooperative. Well, oh. sorry. It's my turn this time. You stole my line last time. Okay, keep going. Yes. And designed by Joss Dirksen, like I was saying, this is based on the Wings of Glory system, which is also used in X-Wing, Attack Wing, Star Trek, and Attack Wing Dungeons and Dragons. I don't think you can find the Dungeons and Dragons one anymore, but there's quite a few different iterations of this system out there. Now I'm going to toss it over to Julie, who's going to tell you more about the game itself, except for the fact that it's cooperative because she doesn't need to. Because he stole my line. I didn't steal your line. So it's a cooperative game. You didn't need to tell them that. <laughs> that plays in 45 to 60 minutes. Uh, it's intended for one to two players uh, for ages uh, 14 and above. I think age 14 is about right. You're going to be using miniatures. You've got some range finders and things like that to use. So it could be frustrating for some younger players. That being said, it's all going to depend on the skill of the gamer. Exactly. No disagreements. Wow, what about the time? Is it really 60 minutes? I I think so, honestly. I think it took us it took us 60 minutes once and took us 45 minutes another time, so I think that's about right. Yeah, and just to point out, this is for one to two players with this box. You can expand it up to six players with some uh, expansions from Attack Wing. There are no expansions for this officially out yet, but the Attack Wing stuff is compatible. Or you can buy multiple campaign boxes, which will blow it up to six players. Now, I'm not sure if it's still going to be the 60 minute mark at that point. I'd say you're probably going to get closer to two hours, depending on how uh, people are familiar with the system. So what are you doing in Star Trek Attack Wing? Well, you're going to be going on a campaign as you lead your Federation ships into battle against the Dominion who are coming through the wormhole and threatening to take over the Alpha Quadrant. In this campaign box, as you can see right here, you have the Akira class and Excelsior class ships. You're going to be naming your captain and deciding what to do with your captain because this is a campaign game, so you get to level up. You'll start with six experience points. You're gonna pick different upgrades, abilities, crew members, as you're going to take your ship on many missions and hopefully gain a lot more experience while limiting the influence of the Dominion as you attempt to win the war and save the Federation. Did I miss anything? I think you covered it. All right, so now what time is it? Now it's time to grab our drinks. Grab our best friend and fellow captain. And we're gonna take it to the table one more time. One more time, that's why the star field is uh, still out in front of us. I mean, it's also kind of pretty. I thought it'd be a nice change of pace. Now let's take a quick look at the components for Star Trek Alliance. We'll start with the two rule books. Now this is the rules of play, which has a nice reference guide on the back and everything that you need to play the game. Overall, the layout is very good. It is a little rules heavy. So we will be doing a basic uh, setup and how to play of the game. There's a lot of rules that you may not encounter as you play it. Uh, just remember that this rule book here, while it does have some rules for Alliance, has a lot of the rules for Attack Wing included as well. Now you also get the campaign book, which has everything that you need with regards to how to set up the campaign, as well as set up the missions. Now, as you need to have a three by three, actually we'll show that to you right now. This will be a good explanation. You need to have a three by three play area for the game. We will not be able to set up the missions when we show them. Now we're gonna keep moving on and we're gonna start with these cards here. I keep knocking them, so I just wanna, Get them maybe off camera. Here are the two cards that you get for your captains. Now this will let you track your skill, uh, how many XP you put in your crew, weapons, or your uh, upgrades. And what this is going to do is you're gonna fill this out or you can do what Julie and I did and just you know, scan a copy and print them out. So you put these at the back. The other cards that you have, your Federation ship cards, reference card for its movement. So you've got the Excelsior class and the Akira class ships. You have the different crew members you can recruit depending on your XP, the different upgrades like reinforcing your shields, improved hull plating, 
You got upgraded weapons like quantum torpedoes that you can get. Down here at the bottom is where you see the cost for such upgrades. And then you've got talents that you can get specific to your captain that will come in handy as you play the game. Now, as I want to get these off camera as well, here are the damage cards. They get played face down. If it's critical damage, well, you will flip it over and you have to suffer these effects unless you're able to repair the ship. Now, that is what this token is for. It's just a reminder that your ship has suffered critical damage. Now, we're going to talk about the Jem'Hadar attack ship. So this is the AI grid. It's going to tell you how to choose the maneuvers, choose their actions, as well as their stats. You're going to be rolling the D6 to choose their maneuvers. The D12 here is also related to them, but this is to count the rounds and when maybe you're going to see some Jem'Hadar response. You have the Jem'Hadar attack ship miniatures. There are three of them. You also have their bases, and they are double-sided because you do have some elite attack ships as well. Now we've got the base, like the plastic base and the peg, which works for all of the different ship miniatures. Here we have the Jem'Hadar cards. As you can see, the red ones are elite. They all have captain skill four, but they do have a special ability. On the other side, they are gray, and all of them are identical with a captain skill of one. Now here we've got your nice range finder to see what range the ships are in. And then just as an example, some of the different maneuvers that you can make. There's a whole slew of them here, but they just all wouldn't really fit on camera. So I kept them off camera. You get a nice taste as to what you have. Here we've got the defensive die, which has the evade battle station symbol, which can be turned into evade and the blanks. Here is the attack dice, which can have the critical hit, a blank, a hit, and on the bottom here, but I'll flip it over, the battle stations that you can turn into a hit. Now we've got the two die, well, the two dials for the maneuvers on the Federation ship. We'll take a closer look at the Excelsior just because it's uh, flipped over, but love the look of the mini and all the fact that they are painted. And then just because we looked at the Excelsior, we'll take a look at the Akira class starship, one of my absolute favorite Star Trek designs. There you've got some of the other tokens. There'll be 12 mission tokens, they're double sided. So those numbers on them may or may not come into play on your mission. We've got the tokens for cloaking, doesn't apply to any of the ships you have. Scan, evade, battle stations. Now, if you have in the printed form a red maneuvers, you can see there are some red symbols there. You have those also on your die not your die, your dial. Well, you put that next to your ship to remind yourself that you have to do a green maneuver in order to be able to take an action. We've got this giant planet space. We've got the runabout slash down ship. Here we have asteroids that also may have a weapons platform or some kind of array. I believe that's a Ketracel White facility as well. We've got the target lock tokens, which are, you got two of them because you need to know what target you locked. Time token, disabled card tokens. If it's disabled, you have to take an action to refresh it. The shield tokens, which may go down if you happen to beam someone off a planet. Tokens just to help you remind yourself which ship is yours. They're double-sided, so they've got two colors. And then these double-sided tokens that have different numbers on them for the Gemidar attack ship. So you can see one, two, seven, and eight. It's just depending on how many wings you have, helps you keep things sorted. So there you have it. It was definitely a, a quick look at the components for Star Trek Alliance. So now I'm gonna teach you how to set up your ships, talk about setting up your captains, and then we're gonna go through one round of play of the game. So keep it right here, I'll be back in warp speed. Now we're gonna teach you how to set up a Star Trek attack wing. Now, one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is take your Jem'Hadar AI card, make sure that that is visible, you're going to, want to take your die, your D6, because you're going to need it. Now, we will take a quick look at the campaign book, and it'll tell you for your player count, how many ships, what bearings, so where they should be placed on the map. Now, you can, that three that you can see over there is the full length of this rangefinder in, so you get an idea of to where to place them tells you when they come into the game at setup, the bearings, and also their orders. 
Now we're not gonna look at this anymore. I just wanted to make sure that you saw how you can tell if you're going to be facing regular Jemadar attack ships or if it's going to be an elite. What you're gonna then do is you need to make sure that you get your bases. Mine wandered away just a little bit. So we have our base, but before I do that even, we need to figure out and as we if it's an elite or a regular ship. As you saw from the beginning, we'll be facing a regular ship. Now we'll want to put a peg, place a number just as a reminder. Now normally I would take this corresponding number one and place it on the Jamhadar uh, card. But as we are not going to be having multiple ships, I'm not gonna do that. It really just gets in the way. So I'm just going to place the Jemadar card in play. Don't need the number one. We place our ship. All right, to the off camera, we just place our ship on there. And we set it up as the attacker. Now I'm gonna set him up over in the corner here. And we'll do the same thing now for our Federation ship. Just had to grab our base. So we got the base and I neglected to show these in the co components, but we've got our Federation tiles. As you can see, the Akira class has a forward arc. We've got a very wide arc for the Excelsior ship. And if you get a nice upgrade, you can even shoot behind you, which is very cool. So in this case though, I love the Akira. It's gonna be a, a lot of fun to play. So I'm gonna just set this up. Normally I would also take one of those Federation tokens just to help match the color, especially if there are going to be multiple ships. But as there are not, I'm very confident that we can just use the ship as is. So I'm gonna slide him into view and let's actually place him over here across from the Jem'Hadar fighter. We'll get some cooler maneuvers that way. I'm gonna need my maneuver dial. So I will take that out. Other than that, I'm going to just need the damage deck, which I will place here. You wanna make sure that the cards are shuffled. You'll need to have dice, which I do have. And we'll just slide them off camera. And of course, You'll want to have your reference cards, which I will place just over here in the other corner as we're not gonna get there. So we have the Federation Starship, the Akira class cards. And then of course we need to pick our reference cards as well as set up our captain. Now for a campaign setup, oh, got this upside down. You wanna write your captain's name. You completely ignore this top part right here and you can spend up to six experience points however you want. Now if it's a little confusing, take a look once again at Act 1 and it has some recommended setups. So the Akira with photon torpedoes and a tactical officer. And that's what I'm gonna do. We'll take the tactical officer which has a value of four, meaning we'll have to have spent four XP on my tactical officer. And then we will look at the Photon Torpedoes, which has a value of two, which means I would have to have spent two on my weapons. I'm just gonna place this there. Like I said, I'm just gonna be doing an example of play. I wanna make sure that everything is nice and tight. So that's how you're really gonna set up the game. Other than that, you're gonna just need to make sure that you have tokens for the different actions, your target lock tokens. I can't see those are under my thumb. You wanna have those. And any other components, for example, the timer token. Ah, let's just put it in my hand like this. And the disabled token, you'll want to have those readily available. Ah, but before I forget, because it almost slipped my mind, we also need our shields. I just placed them here. It works well enough. So the Akira class ship has two shields, as does the Chem Hadar attack ship. I wanna make sure everything is on camera. Yeah, everything's looking good. So there you have it, we've now set up our hero ship. 
We've got our cards, which I'll move off camera for combat, but don't worry, I'll bring them back on if I use them. Our Gemadar attack ship is ready to go. Now we're going to teach you how to play the game, so keep it right here. I'm going to get out of here at warp speed and come back just as fast. Now I'm going to teach you the basics of Star Trek Attack Wing. Now for those of you that may have skipped ahead, I set up my captain, I spent my 6 XP, I have photon torpedoes, which means that my ship's primary weapon gets plus one to damage so that that value is four meaning it's five at range is two or three i have two defense five hull so that means if my shields go down i can still take five hits and you can see my two shield value my crew is the tactical officer and i may disable this card to reroll any number of attack dice which is explain what disabled means we have to disable it we may place this token on it and then during the action phase where we can spend an action to re-enable the card to be able to use it instead of for example taking a battle station an evade or a scan action that we're going to go over in just a moment now i'm going to move these two cards off camera just to make make it so we've got a little bit more room now how does the game work well we've got the explanation here on the back so you choose a mission set up the mission Set up your fleet, which is what we just covered. Choosing a mission and setting a mission setup are very straightforward. All of that, for those of you that missed it, is contained in the campaign book. We then go to the activation phase, which happens in ascending order of captain skill. Each ship executes its chosen maneuver, then immediately performs one action. So remember, it goes in ascending order, not descending order. Then you have the combat phase, which goes in descending order of captain's skill, and then you have the end phase. So as we go in ascending order, that means, first and foremost, we need to trigger our Jemadar attack ship. And just for reference on that, you will notice in our, our captain's skill is starting at two. And I place those cards off to the side and I cannot seem to locate them oh, there they are so there's a perfect reference our captain skill cards are always two even though we cannot fill these in at the start of the campaign skill is always two so we will automatically take our action after the gem Hadar so their orders are attack which we found in the mission book meaning they're going to come after us we then have to take a look and see what arc we're in if you're doing left side arc, just copy what is here. We roll a d6 to see what the maneuver is. And we were gonna make the smartest maneuver. Normally there'd be some more room, you might have some more choices, but we rolled a two, which means if we're far away, he's going to perform a nice two to get into range. Or if we are close to him, he perform an arc of one now as he's going to perform the two he's going to move to attack us and these are just reference cards well this card anyway this has my shields and my stats what i'm going to do now just to get this out of the way a little bit we'll move this over next to the gemadar card i'm not going to be needing the die we set up our movement we slide him along it I will now be in his forward firing arc, which is denoted by the purple on his ship. Next, we choose an action. Now, if for whatever reason they did a hard maneuver, a red maneuver, and had one of these critical tokens, so a hard maneuver, for example, as you can see here is a red three for the Akira class, that prevents you from taking any action. They would then remove that first. That's not the case. They have a target in range, they have a shot at me, I'm in their firing arc. You can use the range finder to check, like that's the outer limits of the range. I'm definitely in there. So they will take a battle station action. You will put that token next to them. If, they, if enemies are within range three and they don't have a shot, well, you would then put the evade token, which is not what's going on. If they'd suffered any critical damage, critical damage, results from a critical hit and have it face up. What then happened is they would flip 
that critical damage face down, making it just a regular damage. That's how damage works in this game. If they penetrate your shields, you take one of these cards face down or face up if it's a critical hit. That's what these tokens are for. If you've suffered a crit, put it near your ship just to remind you there's something that you need to do. If none of the above applies, they will take a scan, which means they can potentially, if someone moves into range, lower their defense by a die. In any case, what they're doing is just taking the battle station action. They're the first cat, they're the lowest rank skill, they have to move first. Well, that's great for me because I'm going to decide with my range finder, well, not my range finder, my, my dial, my move. I don't want to be in their, rank, in their way. So I set my dial to a turn of one. Hopefully that's, that's good enough. And let's see, actually if I do that, I move past them. That's not what I necessarily want to do. So not, not the best move. And we're gonna cheat just a little bit just because of how, uh, how everything worked out. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a hard two here. And let me double check to see if that is a difficult maneuver for my ship. I hope it isn't. No, it's not. So I will be able to do all my actions. We'll take a hard two, which puts us in a very advantageous position. We've now moved out of their firing arc. And they are squarely in mine at range one, which means I get plus one. Now, if for whatever reason I was using a different ship and I had a dorsal array or something could shoot be from behind. I use the reverse side. So you notice I do not get that plus one die bonus. I then get to decide on my course of action. I can take a scan to completely get rid of one of his dice, or I can also take the battle station action. I'm going to take the scan because I actually like it. And if you do need a reference on the back of the rules of play, here it is. So as you can see, Scan token during the combat phase. Any ship attacked by the scanning ship rolls one less defense die. I like that. You've got the battle stations, and we'll go over that in just a moment. So as I'm in the attack position, I get to go. I will be attacking first. I'm going to actually be rolling five dice, which is really not good for the Gem Hadar attack ship. Now, as I am skill two, we go in descending order. I get to go first. So we roll the dice and see what we get. Now, the scan proves not to be as good. I'd have been much better off with a battle station token like he had because battle station means I could convert all of this stuff into hits, which is not the case. That's what I rolled. I did scan though, so I do get to get rid of one of his defensive dice, meaning he's now going to roll his defense die. He gets battle stations. He can then convert that battle station to an evade, meaning I would not hit him. And that would be the end of the round. So we're gonna change this up just a little bit. We're going to pretend that I took a battle station token. We're gonna move the Jemadar into position for combat. And let's do a full combat round. And then we're gonna call it as we will have taught you how to play. But actually, you know what? I did have something else that I could have done. So let me put those five dice back. Because it just was not a great roll. I was off camera, I almost forgot about it. I have my tactical officer. So I can disable him. So we'll just put that here, disable him. And next time after I make a move, I could reactivate him with an action. But I would not be able to take any of the other actions like the scanning or the battle stations, but I can disable them to reroll any number of attack dice. So let's see what would have happened if I rerolled. Well, that, that definitely is a much better roll. That would have worked well with my scan. So let's let's pretend that this was a situation. I really moved the Jemadar because I wanted it to uh, attack me. So he got an evade, which would then cancel out my regular damage. Regular damage gets canceled out before critical. These two, would hit his shields. His shields are now gone. Now, if your shields are lowered for whatever reason, there's a refresh phase, they will come back. If they are destroyed due to damage, they will not come back. So there's gone. We then have to deal him one critical damage. So now he will treat 
all turn maneuvers as red maneuvers. He's got a health of three, so he's two away from being destroyed. He does not have this token because he spent it, but he does get to attack me since I'm now sitting right in his firing arc. He will roll three. And an extra one because I'm in range one. So applies to enemies. So he's got a total of two hits. Let's see what I can do here. So I get two battle stations. Not good, but only two hits. So he takes out my shields. Now we would then go into the end phase. So we would recover any disabled shields that I just mentioned. We remove all tokens that haven't been used. So any scans or anything like that that's left get removed. We'd have to verify what's going on with cloaking. You don't have to worry about that. In terms of this, we record any type of campaign progress if we have then finished the mission. Now, the other actions that we can take that I haven't talked about, there is the sensor echo, which is not important, but the important one is the target lock action, which can be taken by the players. So when you acquire a target lock, you gain one token, you place it on the corresponding one. You place the red one on the corresponding ship. Ship that I've been, yeah. So what you can do, the tokens will allow you to reroll as many of your attack dice as you choose. So that's another way to get something and you don't have to use it right away. So you can be flying around, shooting at each other. And then eventually when you get that kill shot, you can decide to spend your target lock. So there you have it. That is how you play uh, Star Trek Alliance, just really the basics of the game. You also want to make sure you have this round track ready and cover it just to keep track of what round it is for when reinforcements will show up. But this is really just a basic overview. We didn't want to go into too much detail. Hope you enjoyed it. Now, Julie and I will be coming back at you with our review of the game. Star Trek Alliance. What did you think of the game? Well, uh, I liked, it was fun delving back into Star Trek. We haven't done that in a while. Uh, not in terms of a game. I think the last Star Trek game we played is Five Year Mission. Uh, you might be able to see it. I'm not sure. We've got Star Trek Panic and Star Trek Catan, which I don't know when it's going to uh, hit the table. Not with me, it won't. <laughs> You'll play eventually. You always get sucked into one game of Catan a year. Except last year because the people we normally play with, well, we couldn't get together. So yes. you were saved well, not really saved, saved by, by the pandemic. Yeah, it doesn't not really sure. work. No, it does not work. Uh, so, I mean, I like the idea of uh, of leveling up. I, that's always fun. Uh, I didn't feel like I got to level up a lot, two XP at a time, uh, with even with the best outcome of a scenario, isn't a lot of choice of XP. So maybe I'm a little greedy. I would have liked to be able to 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 do a little bit more with my character than I got to do. I think the 2 XP is right, though, because when you consider how the AI works and how uh, the game is definitely a little swingy on, in terms of dice rolls. We'll talk about that. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It does reflect combat, and it's part of the uh, Wings of Glory system. But I like the 2 XP because we're dealing with the AI. If this was a one versus many game, I definitely would agree with you that I'd want more XP. I'd like to have some more progression between because... The power of zone feels significant, but in terms of what you're doing, I mean, it just seems like you're only getting a little bit of an increase, but it can go a very long way when you're playing against the AI. So I was okay with it. I want to also just give everyone a little bit of a history lesson and some credit to uh, Joss Dirksen for designing this. Now, uh, I neglected to mention in the beginning, so I'm going to mention it now, that uh, Josh currently works for Lynn Vander Studios, and when WizKids uh, brought them in on this uh Design. They're also Canadian studios, so it's always awesome to be uh, supporting some fellow Canadians with our gaming purchases. And Joss originally designed the Heroes of the Aturi Cluster fan cooperative mod for X-Wing. And WizKids did a great thing. They picked him up and made him do an official cooperative mod for Star Trek Alliance. And uh, I gotta say, well, Star Trek Attack Wing, which is now Alliance. Gotta say, I really like it because I'm just looking at Star Trek ships, I'm I mean, besides the Klingons and a few others, the other factions are cool, but I really want to work together with, you know, fellow Federation officers in order to save the day. It's not like Star Wars, where the Empire's got really cool ships, people love the Empire, people really love, you know, the Rebels or the New Republic. So playing on either side is cool. You got the Klingons, but other than that, the other factions aren't nearly as popular. So great job, love it. 
really enjoyed what was put together in the box so far. A little bit of a spoiler there. Um, so for the rest of, for me, for the gameplay, um, so yeah, you're rolling dice and you're rolling dice for the uh, AI. the AI as well. Uh, so, you know, as you mentioned, depending on how well you're rolling, uh, you know, you can have the luck of the, the luck of the dice or not. Right. So that's part of the game. It's part of a dice chucking game and that's, well, not dice chucking, but it's a part of a dice game and that's the way it works. I would say no matter what, though, the AI is going to be smart. They may not move as far and do some things that are unexpected, but they will always be trying to engage you or go after their mission in a way that makes sense. So when we're talking about rolling the dice, it does not mean that you're going to luck out and have an AI that just does stupid things. No, that is not a problem in this game. And from someone that's played X-Wing uh, competitively, having some odd maneuvers that happen or people just make mistakes is definitely a part of the game. So when the AI, AI does something that may not be the most advantageous, it does feel like something a player would have done potentially. They're trying to predict your maneuver and hope you outmaneuver them. So it's pretty cool like that. Uh, so yeah, so that's for the game. I mean, for the mechanics of the game, uh, using... Um... Is there a specific name for the system? I always call them the, the range finders, the rulers. So using the rulers is what I was going to say, and Jason said that's the name of it, so I'm going to go with it. Is not my favorite mechanic. We've played it once before with another game. Star um, Saga. Yeah. I'm more of a grid type of person, uh, you know, that you know I can follow a grid or something like this. This, to me, uh, I, I don't, I think it, for me, I feel like it slows the game down. Well, you, you may change your mind. There's another miniatures game that I'm going to get that does have range finders, but uh, because it's not in space, it's going to have a lot better table presence, so you might enjoy it more. Yeah, so maybe. I I still don't love the way this works. Um, I, I can see, you know, I can see how it's supposed to work. Uh, it's not my favorite. I don't hate it. I just, I just don't love it. Um, I also personally... Uh, felt that this wasn't like a adrenaline rush fun uh, in the sense of gets your heart pumping what's going to happen next uh, kind of game I found it a little slow well it's it's a tactical miniatures game and that's just the, the way that they play sure enough if you play the system a lot and you can make decisions really quickly I'm sure that you can get that heart pumping adrenaline, but as someone that hasn't played X-Wing in years, and this is my first time getting this to the table, we definitely were taking this a, a little slow. But I, I'm not gonna argue that point. you are really gotta think things through, make sure that you pick the right maneuvers, otherwise you're gonna find yourself in trouble or potentially off the map and destroyed. Yeah, but I do enjoy that you're playing this together. Uh, the other game that we played was a competitive game. And... No, it was. It was Star Saga. It was cooperative. Okay, well, this one... You just hated Star Saga because it was dull. I remember when you got stuck holding a door open. No, I've <laughs> kind of wiped this game out of my mind. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's, you know, that's the negative I see of it. It's also not the best table presence, the best artwork, as far as I'm concerned. Like, the, the images on it are, I they look like stills from the show well they are the everything is a still from the show and some of the stills i will say are not the greatest some of them are actually blurry yes so quality wise it doesn't have the greatest quality but in terms of the mechanics and gameplay i really like it uh another, a big drawback for this is the way the release has been done because right now this is the only box for star trek alliance if you have an existing attack wing collection buy this you're gonna have a lot of fun it's gonna give you a great reason to dust off a lot of your federation ships and field them uh against the dominion or even if you want to change some things up you got some dominion battle cruises i'm sure you can just easily modify who you're going to be facing off against that being said you don't really have an ai for dominion battle cruisers but right now with just this single box you're going to be playing a six mission campaign with only the same ships and part of the rules do tell you that as you skill up your captain you can get more powerful ships, like a Defiant class ship, an Intrepid class ship. And I think that would make things a little more exciting for you if you saw that you were progressing towards, you know, maybe getting to uh, take command of a ship like Voyager instead of being in your big bruising uh, Excelsior the entire time. 
Uh, because of that, what we've actually decided to do is we've played three missions. I'm fairly familiar with the system, so we only got halfway through the uh, the campaign. So that was enough for us to review this box and uh, the game system. But we are going to get back to it, and we're going to finish it. There is a faction pack coming out for Attack Wing, which has all the ships that are compatible with this. Price point seems pretty good for four ships, so I may actually just take the plunge, even if it's not specifically Alliance. I mean, there's a Galaxy class ship, an Intrepid class ship, a Defiant. So a lot of the stuff that we'd want to play as. I don't really have anything else to add for this. So I, I will say this, is that I like the system. I think it's well done. It's a lot of fun. The ability to expand this up to six players, I think, is going to be really cool. I think it might actually get that adrenaline heart pumping situation going more, even if it's a little slower and tactical, having more ships on the board and having more situations where you can get into a, a lot of trouble will definitely make every mission more exciting. Uh, we we should talk about the dice rules. You know, we, we mentioned that, but not really uh, how it works, is the dice rules are fairly thematic to, to combat. Now, I was playing the Akira class ship, and I chose the Photon Torpedo upgrade, which gave me a very nice, strong attack. And I got to lay away to some Dominion, you know, Gemadar attack ships quite easily, rolling five dice, getting five hits, and when Julie rolls, nothing for the enemy. Well, those ships get blown up by one Photon Torpedo, which actually happens in Deep Space Nine, so it's fairly thematic. But depending on when the rounds of reinforcements are coming in, it can make the game a little easy. So those dice rolls are going to be swingy either way. I think we were most hard pressed by the AI in our first mission when I almost got destroyed because uh, I just kept getting hit uh, really hard. Whereas in our other two plays, it was uh, the inverse uh, of that. Well, I think it's time for us to score the game. I don't think this is one of Julie's favorites. I'm curious to see what she's going to say. So, Julie, what is your score for I would Star say Trek you, Alliance? You go first. No, no, no. We're going to start with the negatives first. Get out that bad juju. <laughs> it's not bad juju. It's going to get a six. It's a passable game. Uh, I enjoyed playing it. I wouldn't, uh, I'm not in a big hurry to get it back to the table uh, unless things, you know, I'll try it with, as you suggest, more. Uh, more ships. Um, a little bit more variety in cards. We'll have to figure out which ones are compatible. Yeah. So I give this uh, a 7. I think this could have gotten a much higher score if uh, there had been a little bit more variety to the release. Uh, what you're getting in terms of just the cards and the selections, as we mentioned, with the ships is limited. Uh, we should have mentioned earlier that the cards are a little limited and you only have six missions. But you're getting a solid core box that you can expand on. And if you have the game Attack Wing already, this is going to be something that will get the collection back to the table. And I always love having games that can be played competitively, even though that's not what we play all the time, and also cooperatively because it just means they're always going to be able to get to the table whenever I'm in the mood to play them. So great job with Star Trek Alliance. Just would have liked to have seen a little bit of a higher quality release for this starting box. So with that being said, Julie, what time is it? It's time to remind people to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when we have some new content for you. You can also take a look down below in the video description. You will see links to all of our social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you'd like to see pictures of Julie and I playing Star Trek Alliance, you will find them on all of those feeds. Also, if you're looking to find a box for Star Trek Attack Wing, Star Trek Alliance, or any other game, take a look for our discount code down there for multizone.ca, a great game store out of Gatineau, Quebec. They do ship all over the place. So click that link, find something that you want. You'll get 10% off your next purchase and a portion of that purchase comes back to the channel. So it's a great way to support us as well. And then popping up in front of us will be some new, well, not new videos, maybe new videos to you, but some of our previous releases. Here will be our most recent release and over in front of Julie, do we go back to Star Trek? Sure. So to take you back to our review and how to play of Star Trek five-year mission. Now what do we need to do? Grab our drinks. Grab our fellow captain. I want to keep playing games. Keep playing games. We're going to keep playing this one. I really wish they had the Sovereign class, though. I want to play the Enterprise E and the Dominion War. That's the real reason why I bought this whole thing. Make it so. Make it so.